Don't believe what, uh, what they say. This is uh, something that every RVer should do. Full timers should do this four times a year. Okay. Everybody else, twice a year. And uh, it's pretty, wow. it's pretty eaten away. That's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah that's pretty bad. Yeah, look at all that. It's pretty dirty. It is pretty dirty. You don't want to have that uh, in your water heater while you're using hot water. Twenty bucks, twenty-five bucks here, rather than six or eight hundred dollars here. Look for a persistent drip in two places. Here which would indicate that this valve is failing. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.live. Today we're back with Jim from Clean Tank. And if you remember in the last video, he showed us a complete master class on black and gray tanks and we'll link to that video down below if you didn't catch that but today it's all about what to do and what not to do with your rv water heater let's jump right in okay. so we cleaned out the holding tanks and uh, as a part of our service we do a complimentary uh, flush and cl cleaning of uh, water heaters uh, if it's an on-demand like a Truma or an Aldi or an Oasis or an Aqua Hot, that's something we don't deal with. But one of these more traditional ones, we definitely do that as a, as a complimentary or added service for you. Um, there are primarily three different brands of traditional water heaters. Uh, this is the first. It is a suburban water heater. These tend to be larger. Uh, it is a steel tank that is lined in either glass or ceramic. Uh, so it's fairly resistant to corrosion. The second kind uh, type is an Atwood water heater. That is an older uh, type. They tend to be a little smaller. They are an aluminum tank. And uh, you, can know, you know that you've got one of those when the drain hole or the drain plug is a little nylon kind of hex nut. Uh, so that's uh, an Atwood type. They are an aluminum tank and they are very resistant to corrosion. And then the last kind is a Dometic uh, tank, and Dometic actually bought Atwood and now has uh, branded them as Dometic tanks. Those are either uh, the aluminum, like the Atwood, or the newer ones are actually a plastic tank. Uh, but they too will have a nylon uh, nut here. This again is a Suburban. Uh, behind this metal uh, nut is a uh, anode. It'll look uh, pretty much like this. Uh, when it's brand new. Um, this particular one is an aluminum anode, so the purpose of an anode is to act as a sacrifice. So water likes to react with metal, and what we do is we put a more reactive or a softer metal as an anode in there, and the water interacts with this first rather than the surfaces within a water heater. So we would rather have it uh, eat up this 20 or $25 anode, the water, uh, than, than interact with the surfaces in the tank and then you might have to have a tank failure and then a complete uh, replacement. So 20 bucks, 25 bucks here rather than six or $800 here. Okay. So uh, we've asked the owner if he has uh, turned off his water heater. Yes. And that's important because once we drain the water out of here, uh, we do not want uh, there to uh, the water the heater to attempt to fire up. If there's no water in there, it'll burn out the element. So uh, this is uh, something that every RVer should do. Full timers should do this four times a year. Okay. Everybody else twice a year. So this is a very simple cleaning process. Just empty up. Uh, make sure the water is off. Make sure the water heater is off as well. On some of these, there's an outside switch, a good idea to turn that off as well. And then this uh, pressure relief valve up here uh, relieves the pressure in the tank. And then we just simply remove this draining bolt. And then look out so you don't want a hot shower. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to quickly move out of the way here because uh, it's going to come out pretty fast at me. And we'll see if I did a good job determining where 
the bucket should be in it. Seems like it did. So this is the anode rod we're looking at here. Whoops. And uh, it's pretty, wow. it's pretty eaten away. That's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah that's pretty bad. So uh, I would probably recommend that uh, we replace this with a new one. Okay. And uh, luckily for us. I have one in my pocket, so we're going to use it right over there. So we're going to put a new one in here. We'll show how to do that. And I believe that was that was new as of earlier this year. I'm surprised it's that far gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, usually these uh, these bigger water heaters like this, uh, those anodes will last anywhere from uh, usually about a year to a year and a half. So the fact that this uh, it got eaten up that quickly. Uh, you know, it could be a lot of factors. Could be the quality of the water. Um, having a uh, actually a uh, water uh, softener actually can increase the rate that the anode is uh, is eaten up or, or, or dissolved. So, oh, if, interesting. Uh, yeah, if anybody has a uh, a water softener, I'm not saying it's not a not a reason to get one. Everybody likes soft water. I just expect that you're going to replace that anode a little quicker. So doing this a couple, you know, two to four times a year, depending on how often you use your RV, is a good idea. Uh, just drain that initial water off. We have a lot more RV tips and RV how-to videos coming out, so smash that subscribe button or scan this QR code right over here with your smartphone. That way you can get subscribed and catch all of our videos coming out soon. All RV water tanks or water heaters are set at 140 degrees. Generally speaking, you cannot adjust that temperature, but they mix uh, to something that's a little more uh, easy to tolerate in the shower. Okay. Uh, this particular one, if I look in here, uh, we've got quite a bit of corrosion that's kind of built up in here. You can see it in the threads. I use a little uh, one inch, uh, it's called a fittings brush. Actually, you'll find it in the plumbing department. Uh, where the PVC type plumbing is and uh, I use it to go in there and just clean out those threads so that when I put an anode back in there it uh, seats properly, it seals and you don't have to worry about leaks. So having one of these in your toolkit is generally a pretty good idea. Uh, you won't have to do it very often, every, every couple of years or so. If you're inspecting and cleaning out that uh, water heater uh, generally speaking, you won't see this type of corrosion that's in there. So we're going to keep working on it a little bit to clean those threads up. For the uh, aluminum or atwood or Dometic type um, that have a nylon nut, you'll you probably heard that you don't need to put a, an anode in those. And uh, talking about uh, myth number nine, I think this is. Yes. be. So the manufacturer will say no need to put an anode in. And uh, Jim, the clean tank guy, says about year four or five, if you're doing cleaning in here, you're going to start to see corrosion coming out. That corrosion is going to look like little soft uh, salt crystals. Uh, a lot of people think that it's a calcium buildup. Uh, it's actually not, but if you start to see that coming out with some prevalence, then you actually can get an anode that fits the smaller Atwood aluminum tanks, and it's a magnesium anode. Magnesium is much softer than aluminum, and you can put that in there in place of that nylon plug, and that will help to prolong the life of your water heater. Uh, so don't believe what, uh, what they say. If you do put uh, an anode in within the first two years of a new water heater, an Atwood one, it will void the warranty, so make sure you're waiting. Oh. At least two years, in my experience, it'll be about year four or five. I use a water heater pipe cleaner. And you can uh, put these online. And that just kind of helps to clean out the threads in there. If you want to, uh, you can stick your finger in there. And you can feel uh, the uh, stuff that's inside. Oh, of yeah. It's kind of like a gritty kind of sand. Yeah, I guess you kind of see it coming out right here, right? Yeah, that's not actually corrosion. That's just uh, the anode dissolving. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that in there. It's just we want to make sure you get it out because you don't want to have that uh, in your water heater while you're using hot water. Okay. So we're going to take our uh, water heater flush wand here and 
I always like to use a sanitary hose, that's why I use the blue one. You would never use the hose that you use for your black tank flush here. This is Okay, right. This is water that you potentially could be drinking or exposed to, so we want to use uh, as much uh, sanitary uh, products as we can here. Uh, I take a, uh, a Lysol wipe, a uh, bleach wipe, and I wipe down everything so that it's very sanitary. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and stick it in there. And uh, before I do that, you'll see that it kind of dips down. Right. So your water heater bottom is right down here below the drain. And when we stick our finger in here, that's that, that stuff, that sand, right. accumulates down in there. So this wand is designed to kind of flush it out. And that's what we're going to see here. So I just go in and out, kind of twirl it around a little bit. Okay. Yeah, look at all that. It's pretty dirty. It is pretty dirty. So again, there's nothing wrong with what's coming out here. This uh, There's nothing wrong with this water heater. What, what we're taking out is completely normal and expected. It's just a part of that uh, twice a year or four time a year uh, cleaning that we should be doing as our view. So just let that uh, wand do its business. This will take you just a few minutes. These water heaters, no matter the brand, are designed to last anywhere between 15 and 20 years. Okay. Lo longer than most uh, people who own their RV. I'm just seeing that stuff come out here. We use it to kind of clean off a little bit. I like to do that cleaning twice, so the first one gets most of it out, and then the second one will get everything out. Okay. Once I see that water being pretty clear, nothing else coming out, then I know that uh, that water heater tank is full, or uh, clean, excuse me. Now I'm not really seeing anything else coming out there, maybe a little bit, but I'm pretty close to being done. Like I said, this is 10 minutes at the most. So ideally then I would be doing this once a quarter or every three months. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. And again, you're going to see stuff coming out. That is normal. Uh, again, if you have an Atwood or an aluminum tank and you start seeing things come out, meaning you didn't have an anode in there, you didn't add one later, that would be an indication that it's time to put one in. Okay. That would be an indication that uh, the water is starting to interact with those aluminum and other metals inside of your tank, and it's time to put an anode in there and let that uh, do its work. So we're done with that. Cool. And now we're going to put a new anode in. And you have a specific uh, brand of anode that you recommend, is that right? I do, I do. So this is uh, made specifically for a suburban water heater. It is a nine and a half inch aluminum anode. It is made by Camco. Okay. Uh, I will. Uh, I will warn you that there are some cheaper ones. Uh, that are on the market. They usually come in two packs. Uh, they're considerably cheaper than these, uh, but they tend to be a little bit longer. And when you install them in there, they restrict the flow of water in your water heater. And uh, customers of mine that uh, use those invariably will call me up the next morning and say, we don't have any water pressure. And then I'll say, remember, we talked about not using the cheap ones. So this is a place where you don't want to skimp on on the expense. Okay, well, can you tell if I, if that I mine I think was in a two pack <laughs> from Amazon. Yeah. So we'll we'll take a look here. Usually you can tell by the cost. If it's okay, if it's two for ten bucks, you know that's kind of a red flag right there. Okay, these are going to cost you fifteen to twenty twenty five bucks a piece. So. Okay, gotcha. Yep, absolutely. I can tell this came in a two pack uh, <laughs> because the metal is black. You want the ones that have a little silver, so if you look there, you can definitely see the difference between the two. Okay, gotcha. So these cheaper ones do tend to get eaten up uh, quite a bit uh, faster, uh, but they're also kind of an odd size. So try to avoid that uh, ones with the So black. that could be the reason that if Absolutely. this was new, yep. uh, that it just went way too fast. Yeah, these, uh, these nine and a half inch ones, these Camco ones, 
for a full timer will last you at least a year, if not a year and a half. So over time, even though you might be tempted to uh, to buy the purchase the cheaper ones, you're probably going to end up uh, paying the same amount. So you do get what you pay for. <laughs> yes, you do. So you just want to snug it down in there, not too tight. Okay. Uh, we're just looking to uh, uh, get it tight there. I put a little uh, plumber's tape on there just to kind of help with the sealing. Okay. And then uh, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to hook up the water again, uh, turn it on. It'll fill up the tank from the bottom. We keep this pressure relief valve open. It'll drive the air out of here. We'll get a little spurting at the end. We'll snap it shut and give it a press. And then we'll look for a continuous leak here. If there is one, open it up again and give it another press. Might have to do that a couple times. Okay. Um, and then we'll also look for a continuous leak down here. If you find one, you might have to tighten it up or maybe re-thread it. You might have re cross-threaded it or something like that. So. Uh, but once, okay. you, once the leak stop here, or the drip stops here, the drip stops here, you're all good to go. And then that's uh, cleaning your water here. Wow. No, that's that's the most detail I have seen anybody talk about <laughs> this before. And I've had it done a few sure. times, but uh, no, that's great information. It is not a hard process at all. Like I said, 10 minutes, you're in and out. And uh, it's, a, it's a good preventative maintenance for our viewers to be doing. I'm gonna awesome. Hook, I'm going to hook up the water and we'll let it fill up. Sounds good. Okay, so we've turned the water back on. It's filled up the tank. We've got the pressure relief valve uh, open and we see the water coming out here. So we're going to snap it closed and give it a press. Okay. We want to look for a persistent drip in two places. Here, which would indicate that this valve is failing, and here, which would indicate that this connection is not tight enough. So up here, a couple of drips, I wipe them off. I don't see anything coming out. If I did, I could probably open this up again, give it another push just to seat that valve. And okay. Down here, I don't really see any drips either other than the first one or two. So that's in there nice and tight. So we are good to go. And we can go ahead and turn the water heater back on if there's an outside switch. Okay. You as an RVer uh, could go ahead and turn it on inside. Okay. Your water heater is ready to ready to use again. Okay, great. So that's it. So just put the cover on and we're done here. Never miss any of our RV how-to and RV tips videos by smashing that subscribe button or scanning this QR code right here with your smartphone and subscribing to the channel. And a big thanks to Jim at Clean Tank for showing us how to handle everything to do with our RV water heaters. And again, all of Jim's information at Clean Tank you'll find down below. Lots of helpful information on his website. And for the next RV how-to video, you can just click right over here.